Welcome to Business Analytics. Today's session is an introduction to Business Analytics. Today's learning objectives are to explain what is Business Analytics, to compare and contrast data information and knowledge, evaluate the challenges associated with the business analytics field, describe the key success factors for a business analytics initiative within an organization, and examine strategies for business analytics that an organization can apply in gaining a, com a competitive advantage. What is business analytics? Depending on who you speak to, the perspective may be different. Some persons classify business analytics as computer science. Others refer to it as data warehousing. It may also be classified as statistics. You may also hear it being referred to as a form of technology particularly the SaaS software. Others may use it synonymously with mathematical models. It may, you all may also hear that it is an executive dashboard, as well as it is Six Sigma all over again. The truth is business analytics touches on these various eras and encapsulates some of these different tools. However, formally, business analytics is the use of data, information technology, statistical analysis, quantitative methods, and mathematical or computer-based models. And the intent is to help managers gain an improved insight about their business operations for decision making. Visually, business analytics has an overlap with statistics, business intelligence and information systems, as well as modeling and optimization. It covers simulation and risk. It also look at what if analysis and there's visual, visualization such as dashboards, charting, etc. And of course, data mining. Now, for the purpose of this course, data mining from a practical perspective is what we will be focused on. We'll be looking at how data mining can be used to answer key business questions and how data mining can be used to assist with the decision-making process within companies. Now, it is important to note that companies that utilizes analytics outperform their peers, and research shows that they substantially outperform their peers by as much as 220%. Additionally, they experience revenue growth 1.6 times that of their competition and stock price appreciation 2.5 times that of the competitor. In essence, business analytics has become a key tool in weaponizing organization in becoming competitive and outperforming their peers. But what is the goal of business analytics? Why have companies started to embrace this tool? The intent really is that it is used to help the enterprise to make better business decisions. The important thing here is that a company has the right information within the right time and in the right format. 
When these three things combine, companies are better able to make strategic, tactical, and operational decisions. And ultimately, the results is a better company, better performance, better sales, and the experience in terms of competition that separates you from the market and make you unique. Now, what are the benefits of business analytics? To be clear, it is more than faster reporting. Now, while we're familiar with looking at analytics from the perspective of a spreadsheet that has rows and columns of data, analytics is much broader. It covers solutions that are found in the artificial intelligence realm. It also includes solutions that may result in new technology, technology that covers self-driving cars, technologies that also covers search engines on the web. So while it is traditionally related to data that you may consume in rows and columns, the benefits of business analytics goes far beyond that and covers very novel solutions that we will discuss further on in this course. More specifically, the benefits of business analytics solutions must cover one of the following. It should increase revenue or reduce cost, improve efficiency, or better manage assets. Now, how can analytics bring about one of the four benefits? Data can be a source of income from many organizations, and that can result in increased revenue. But also, analytics can be used to help organizations to identify target markets for selling particular products, and that will result in increased revenues. It can also be used to cut costs. Analytics can be used to identify the possibility where a particular business process may take five days and can identify solutions that can reduce a five-day process to a matter of minutes or hours. In terms of improving efficiencies, analytics can be used to analyze the data to identify where a business process may be modified. Possible modifications may include digitizing a particular process so that you do not have a lot of human contact with paper and with processing. And of course, you can also have used business analytics to identify potential trends and to provide potential solutions pertaining to how an organization can better manage its assets. Now, why do we want to explore business analytics? Why do companies want to look at this new field and embrace it? Aristotle Onassis says, the secret of success is to know something that nobody else knows. Therefore, Competitive pressure is one of those key things that has pushed companies to the point where they're now exploring and looking at their data to see how well it will serve them. As companies continue to compete on price, eventually the bottom falls out. And therefore, companies have to move from traditional competition on price and to compete on service. Now, how will you be able to compete on service 
service means that you will have to now offer personalized service. You'll have to manage the relationship with your clients. Now, in order to do so, you need to be able to offer a personal touch that allows clients to feel as if they are unique, to feel as if you know them, and for them to feel as if you genuinely care. Now, Amazon is an excellent example of this type of service offering. Amazon allows the client to feel as if post purchasing of a product, to feel the recommendations that come through, to say, because you buy this, we're offering you that. But even during the process, Amazon gives you tips of things that you could potentially buy that will complement what you have bought already. Now, Amazon is able to do this because they have a robust analytics engine in the background. This allows them to have a real-time enterprise that is interacting with you while you're in the moment and not just post-purchasing. If you're using analytics, you'll also be able to engage in systemic listening. You'll be able to analyze your data that are external to your company, data that you find on social media, and therefore companies will be able to respond accordingly as quickly as they can and as close to real time as possible. Now, there are other motivations as to why organizations are embracing business analytics. One of which is that they're drowning in data, but they're lacking in information and knowledge. Now, everything we do in this current space is generating data. If we go to the ATM and we make a withdrawal, we are generating data pertaining to how much money we withdrew, as well as our balance and the date that we made the withdrawal. If you go to the supermarket and you make a purchase, data is generated pertaining to how much of an item you purchase, as well as how much you spent with the particular supermarket. Now, organizations are now faced with this increased amount of data collection. How will they be able to capitalize to identify insights within the data that can potentially help to transform the company? In addition to that, the ability of a companies to collect data seems to have surpassed their ability to make sense of it. One of the reasons is that most companies simply do not have the infrastructure within the organization to make sense of the data when we compare to the rate that the data is being created. Now, what has contributed to the level of data that we are both creating and storing is the fact that storage capacity has increased significantly over the years. We're now able to store a lot more data and at a far lower price than we could many years ago. Now, as we discuss the importance of data, it is important for us to be clear on the definition of what data is. Now, according to the new Oxford American Dictionary, data is facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. Now, data is created as a byproduct of a business process. Companies have several business processes, and business processes are there to help the organization to achieve its goal on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, a business process would be 
a person going online on an online store to purchase an item. When you go online to make a purchase, some data is generated. Data is generated pertaining to what you bought, how much of that item you bought, the unit cost, and the total spend, as well as any taxes that may be generated as a result of the spend. If you go to your local tax office to pay your taxes, information that, that is created as a result is the tax ID associated with the tax being paid. If it is property tax, the property that the tax is related to, the amount that you paid, and when you pay it. Now, can you think of any other business processes that has data been created as a byproduct? Now, sources of data, we get data from point of sale. We get data from customer cards. Your credit cards generate quite a bit of data. When you swipe a credit card, it tells you what merchant you spent with, what time of day, how much you spent. It gives information sometimes over a period of time you can assess if you are a repeat spender with this particular merchant. Call center records also generate data. So when we speak about data within this course, do not limit it to just text and figures, but voice, video, pictures, they're all data. And listed on this slide are all the different possible sources that gener data is generated from, the internet being a major one. And I'm sure you can identify many other sources that generate data. So what is information? Information is data that has been processed to make it meaningful and useful. Persons refer to information as data with meaning. Now, there are some important characteristics that makes information useful. The first of which is if the information is relevant. For information to be relevant, it must pertain to the problem at hand. Let's take, for example, a scenario where someone is applying for a loan and we need to assess their risk for that loan. Now, what is relevant to that scenario would be the salary of the individual, if they have any other commitment in terms of loans, how long they've been employed, etc. What may be relevant to this scenario are their hobbies, or how frequently do they take trips to Europe, as that will not contribute to the risk assessment of the client. Another important characteristic of useful information is, is the information complete? Now again, let's follow through with that same example. If a client is applying for a loan, and they have deliberately omitted two potential loan facilities that they have with other institutions. And you ha do not have that data or information rather to assess their risk. That could potentially result in you approving a loan for a client that may go in default. And therefore it is considered sometimes that partial information is often worse than no information. Information should also be accurate. Erroneous information could lead to disastrous decision making. So, with the same example, a client who comes in 
and requests the loan may have a loan facility with an institution and has omitted two zero mistakenly from their loan amount. Two zero from a loan amount which results in them reporting that they have a loan, loan facility outstanding with 100,000 versus 10 million. In some scenarios, depending on the decision to be taken, let's say it is related to one's health, it could result in devastating impact. For example, an omission from a patient's record that indicates that a patient is allergic to penicillin if this information has not been is not accurately reflected it could result in devastating impacts such as the person losing their life and so it is important that information is accurate and reflects what it ought to It is also important that information is current. When assessing a client's credit risk, it is more important to assess the risk related to the client's behavior in making loan payments within the last five to 10 years versus looking at information that covers the client's behavior as far back as 20 or 30 years. This is important because behavior changes and circumstances changes, and therefore information that is considered valuable yesterday may not be relevant today. Information should also be economical. The costs related to acquiring information should not outweigh the benefits of using that information. And so it is important that organizations manage the balance between the two, costs versus benefit in acquiring and exploiting the information that is required. Now, what is knowledge? Knowledge is referred to as a justified true belief. It is considered the highest level in the hierarchy when we compare data and information and knowledge. Information is in the middle and data is at the lowest level. Knowledge is the richest, deepest, and the most valuable of the three. It is oftentimes referred to as information with direction. Knowledge is where the value truly lies for organizations. According to Peter Drucker, Knowledge has become the key economic resource and the dominant, if not the only source of competitive advantage. Now, if we look at this pyramid, what we'll see is as we increase from data to information to knowledge, we have an increase in value. We have more data, less information, and even less knowledge. Now, this is hard to do in practice because it requires a lot of commitment for a company to exploit its data where it moves to information and ultimately it becomes knowledge. However, this is what organizations should aim for, converting its data to information and ultimately knowledge. Now let's look at an example that compares the difference between data, information, and knowledge. So data is a fact. For example, the price of crude oil is $80 per barrel. Information is facts or conclusions that have some meaning. For example, the price of crude oil has risen from $70 to $80 per barrel. But knowledge is when we compare information or experiences and our insight. And we can make the determination that when crude oil prices go up by $10 per bar barrel, it is likely that petrol prices will rise by two cents per liter.
Business analytics impacts several fields. We'll start by looking at retail. Business analytics can be used to perform basket analysis. Basket analysis is used by several companies to identify cases where products may be purchased together. It is used, for example, by Amazon to indicate where a client purchases one product and they have made other purchases that are linked to that product and they use this to make suggestions for your purchase patterns. Additionally, basket analysis is used by Netflix and YouTube to identify cases where a movie or a video that you have watched to make recommendations for videos that are also related to that video clip that you have watched before. It's also used in sales forecasting to examine patterns to help retailers make stocking decisions. It can provide patterns to identify areas, for example, where a client may make a purchase of a particular brand of lotion today and to give a projection on when they're likely to make the purchase of a complementary perfume in the future. It is also used in merchandising, planning and allocation. Analytics can be used to assist retailers in adding new stores where they can improve planning and allocation by examining patterns in stores with similar demographic characteristics. Through this, they are better able to assess what are the products that a store or location should carry based on the socio-demographic factors that exist in the area where the store will be placed. In banking, analytics can be used for fraud detection. Fraud plagues a lot of financial institutions and therefore analytics is a key tool that can be used to identify patterns where credit card or other forms of fraud is being perpetrated by unscrupulous persons. It can also be used to predict the life cycle management of clients. Through analytics, a bank can, can tell what is the lifetime value of potential clients and therefore they're able to perform specific segmentation and offer deals and discounts regarding promotions to different client segments. Within telecommunication, analytics can be used to assess customer loyalty. Particularly locally, we have number portability where persons are able to switch from one telecommunication provider to the next while keeping their telephone numbers. This is referred to as churn. Using analytics, companies can assess churn to identify those customers who are likely to remain loyal and those who are likely to switch to the competition. This can be used to assess who are likely to switch because of a promotion and who are the clients who are likely to stay based on your brand value and this will give you a sense of how profitable you can be as a result of a promotion. Now let's examine a real life example with FedEx's use of analytics. A few years ago, UPS went on strike. As a result, FedEx saw its volumes increase. After the strike, its volume fell. Now what did FedEx do? Using simple analytics, FedEx identified those clients whose FedEx volumes had increased and then decreased after the strike. FedEx was able to make special offers to these customers to get all of their business. Though a simple strategy, FedEx was able to win significant business from the competition. Analytics is also used by law enforcement. 
Determining plays a key role in assisting the FBI forensics team in the US. The FBI and other law enforcement agencies utilizes data mining to sift through thousands of reports from field agents looking for connection between data points and to assist them with predicting who are the perpetrators of particular crimes. Now let's look at a clip that shows a solution created by IBM that utilizes analytics to help fight crime in the United States. Law enforcement agencies face increasingly sophisticated criminals. Yet there are fewer resources to combat crime and ensure public safety. So officers and their leaders must shift emphasis from reacting to proactive policing. Situational awareness and effective resource deployment decisions depend on the analysis of both historical and real-time data. IBM's integrated law enforcement solution brings together proven practices and technologies designed to serve the command and operational community, serve intelligence analysts and the investigative community, and serve the frontline officer community. Through data analytics, business intelligence, and role-based applications and dashboards, officers and criminal investigators can better understand and act on the hidden patterns of criminal activity and give officers on the beat actionable insights to protect and to serve. Law enforcement is increasingly an information management business. Getting the right information into the right hands at the right time can save lives. Visionary police departments are deploying big data-driven technologies to become more proactive and effectively deploy resources. The police department itself is 1,250 men and women, uh, 800 are sworn positions. We wanted to be a world-class police agency, provide world-class police service to our citizens, and while our political mission was to build a better Mesa, the law enforcement mission was to build a safer Mesa. Because at the end of the day, everybody wants to reduce crime and everybody wants a safe community because without it, you don't have economic growth, you don't have anything. That's kind of where we started when crime started rising back in 2005. By the time you got the information, the information was old. The ability to drill down beyond broad hotspots on a grid and to integrate economic, environmental, and situational data can dramatically impact the face of crime. Um, there's a lot of requests for services and a lot of requests in our resources. The Crime Data Warehouse supports and contains all incident reports, all, all calls for service, all crimes reported, all information reports that we gather, information gathered by investigators, supplemental reports, it is the brain that, that contains all the information that we have in the police department. We started out with the uh, University of Memphis. They came in and used IBM's uh, SPSS to create a statistical package. And that's kind of where Blue Crush was formed. Crush is crime reduction, utilizing statistical history. So using the data, using the history of crime to predict where you're going next and how are you going to deploy officers. When the uh, report hits the system, the crime analyst immediately has access to it. It tells us what our percentages are on all of the different crimes as a city as a whole and shows each precinct commander where he is for that day and where he is month to date and where he is year to date and where he is year to date over the past five years. We generate a lot of information. We generate a lot of reports, which is why we started with IBM and trying to provide a solution for, to analyze that information to help our investigators gather that information quicker and faster. The solution we came up with is Blue Palms. Uh, it's predictive analytics uh, lead modeling software. We put all the information from the crime data warehouse into this program and it has a historical knowledge of all the incidents that ever occurred. When we endeavored into the program, our IBM partner was given 40 cases that we successfully concluded. And we took those cases and we ran it against the program as a proof of concept. We had a 73% success rate. Uh, 29 out of 40 cases were successfully identified the offender as committing the crime. In the past, our analysts would look this information up um, 
following trends or at a request of the investigator. Uh, this information could be gathered and, and deciphered and analyzed and it would take an analyst in maybe several days. What this product offers us is a solution and an answer most of the time within a minute of the request. We're going to save money, we're going to save resources, and we're going to catch the offender quicker. We're now realizing the power of the program, the power of analytics, and we're having conversations we haven't had previously. Massive volumes of varied data shared through collaboration and information networks are enhancing both intelligence analysis and proactive policing across jurisdictions. The mission of the Fusion Center is to provide actionable intelligence, support our law enforcement community, enhance our crime-fighting efforts, and we do this by uncovering sources of information through databases. And our number one database is CopLink. CopLink has allowed us uh, in the cars uh, to, to grab information from anywhere in the region. Uh, you have part of a license plate, you have a, somewhat of a description of somebody, a nickname, scars, marks, tattoos, things like that. We are able to allow the officers to use CopLink on their mobile digital terminal in the car uh, to grab that information uh, very rapidly. The uh, IBM solution has allowed us to take a new look and gain a totally different perspective on our data that we've, we've always had. And that's why you're seeing uh, crime down 28% over five years, why you're seeing uh, crime down 14% uh, when we look at last year to this year. If you can find something like coupling that helps us do our job in a better, more efficient, faster way, well that saves us money. And what we call value engineering in the city is what coupling provides to our officers on the street. It allows them to access information that used to take days, weeks, and months, and minutes. I think that it's open communication doors. And we now understand the true value of collaboration, the true value of something like CopLink, fusion centers, working with all levels of police departments and city management to make sure that we're addressing the problems as quickly as we can. We had a vision, we thought we could get there, and we did. And now all those people that were formerly resisting the idea are all behind it and pushing us to get to the next step. With the help of my staff uh, and other partners in the region, we're continually trying to push the envelope and really change law enforcement for the next decade. And really that's what we're doing. We're providing a service to a community. We are a business uh, that allows people to move freely and to be safe where they live. After watching that clip, how has the IBM solution impacted the police department in addressing the following areas, cost savings, improved efficiencies, and asset management? Use examples from the clip to justify your answer and post your response on ELS. Now we have spoke about several benefits of analytics as well as how it is utilized in different fields. Now there are some key challenges that we must discuss that impacts the business analytics field. First of which is the analytic talent. What we have seen is that data scientists, which are the individuals who convert data into actionable insight, are scarce in the market. This talent is scarce globally as different companies are constantly seeking to find those persons who can make sense of their data. Now, because analytics is relatively new, the talent for the skills is still being developed. And what we have seen is that most universities are attempting to create programs such as this one that you're currently enrolled in to start training individuals or expose them to analytics as a potential field that they can explore for employment. The intent is to address this talent gap that currently exists. Now, when we look at the contrast between the rate that data is growing versus the rate at which we are creating data analysts, we see that there's a large gap. 
According to Oracle, data storage is accumulating at a 28% annual growth rate when compared to data analysts in the workforce is growing at 5% growth rate per year. It is anticipated by 2023, there'll be a significant gap between data collected and the talent to explore the data, and this gap will continue to increase to 2025 and beyond. This means that this field is ripe for employment and ultimately will be one of those key areas that persons will be employed in in years to come. Another challenge faced within the business analytics field, and particularly for organizations who are exploring implementing analytics program, is culture. Old habits die hard. It is difficult sometimes for companies to change from traditional management style that is based on intuition versus a more contemporary style that is based on data and scientific tools and complements your experience. People do not like change. Change means losing what you have mastered in the past and now needing to learn to do things all over again. Information-based decisions can upset traditional power relationships and change the dynamic within an organization. It is hard to convince an organization that is profitable and has been generating revenue over the years to consider analytics as a key performance tool that will push them further. Persons will say, what we're doing currently works. It has always worked. We are making a profit and we continue to generate revenue. And therefore, it will be key to create an analytics program that seek to revolutionize the culture within a company for it to be come a data-centric environment. Another challenge with business analytics is to justify the return on investment. It is difficult to identify the return on investment for analytics. Most of the value gained from analytics are intangible and holistic. For example, by using analytics to improve customer satisfaction or to improve the decision-making process for managers and supervisors alike may not necessarily be quantifiable on a balance sheet. Analytics projects are complex, costly, and their returns are not immediately clear. Questions may arise. Will the value gain from the analytics outweigh the investment? And if so, when? Therefore, it is recommended that a combination of tangible and intangible factors needs to be quantified to rationalize the investment and movement towards analytics. Companies must be able to understand the impact on the, bal the, ba the balance sheet. However, not all impacts will be quantifiable on the balance sheet. Another challenge within business analytics is security and privacy. Data mining and managing customer relationship raises some privacy concerns regarding how data is handled. In recent times, we have seen a number of regulations being created there is the GDPR that has been created by the European Union. There are also similar regulations being created in the US and in Jamaica, our own Data Protection Act is currently being tabled in Parliament. Now, 
One of the most common criticisms of data and analytics is security. These concerns relate to the collection of data and the use of data. When we collect person's data, are we ensuring that the data is secured? And also when we use the data, are we ensuring that the data is being used in an ethical way? Because of this, data security has made information assurance one of the most popular concentration areas in information systems department around the world. And a lot of companies have now started to create governance around how they treat and handle clients' data as there are a number of potential fines that may be tied to data misuse or the unethical handling of data. Now let's look at this example of the questionable use of data by British Telecom. In 1999, British Telecom invented a new marketing program where they offered discounts to the most frequently called numbers of a client. British Telecom notified the prospective customers of this program by sending them their most frequently called numbers. One woman received the letter. Because of this letter, she uncovered her husband's cheating. She then threw him out of the house and sued for divorce. The husband threatened to sue British Telecom for violating his privacy. And as a result, British Telecom suffered negative publicity. Now, what do you think British Telecom could have done differently where they could, have ch could achieve the results of their marketing program but avoided the reputational damage suffered through this negative publicity? Other questionable ethical use of data has been seen with practices employed by Target. Now let's take a look at this clip. We all know that stores know things about us based on our shopping habits. But you know, sometimes what stores find out gets a little bit creepy. The latest, how some stores can figure out that a woman is pregnant before she tells anyone. Consumer reporter John Matteris is here now with this unusual story. John? Well, Carol, many stores now keep a data base of everything you buy. That's how grocery store registers know what coupons to spit out for you. You know, your shopper's card keeps a record of all your purchases at the grocery store. Store. But some say it went too far when Target figured out that a teen was pregnant before her family even knew. That's right. A report in the New York Times says Target's sophisticated computers are able to guess when a woman shopper is pregnant based on 25 items that pregnant women buy. Among them, vitamins, zinc and magnesium supplements, and cocoa butter lotion. Toss an extra large clothing or a rocking chair, and the store decides you are pregnant and starts targeting you with baby coupons. But the New York Times says an irate father asked a Target manager why his teenage daughter was receiving baby coupons in the the mail. Turns out his daughter was pregnant and had told no one at all, but she had been shopping at Target for products that an expected mom typically buys. How about that? The New York Times says Target's goal is to lure expected moms during their second trimester. It wants to get them to start shopping them to make Target their number one store through their pregnancy and then once they have their baby. Is this legal? Yes, but if you find this just a bit creepy, you might want to spread out your shopping among various stores. Or the simple way to stop anything like this, pay by cash so you're anonymous. Other challenges of business analytics is that there may be a lack of understanding of how to use analytics within an organization. Companies are now looking at this as a new paradigm, and so a lot of persons may not be familiar or understand how analytics can be used. Additionally, competing business priorities may distract from analytics initiatives. 
Companies are in the business of making money, generating revenue. And therefore, while companies are focused on these areas, analytics may be overlooked or pushed to the side. There's also a challenge related to getting good data to perform analytics as well as sharing information. Now, as a company attempts to implement an analytics program, it will be important that there is executive sponsorship and leadership to drive the analytics program. Investing in a business analytics program without aligning the program to business priorities is like a ship without a navigator. Analytics is a supporting tool and therefore it should support business objectives that an organization is pursuing. There needs to be a synergy in the implementation of an analytics program. And that synergy is with the strategy that you employ to create the program, the value that the program brings, and the leadership that will be responsible for driving the, the program throughout the organization. Now let's discuss some key success factors for implementing a business analytics program within a company. The first thing is that you must establish a vision and evangelize it. In establishing your vision, you should determine what is the overall role that analytics will play in driving the business strategy. You have to determine the key business drivers which drive the scope. What units and what subjects will the analytics program cover? Who will evangelize the vision for analytics? This will be the role, the role of a top executive, preferably a CEO, who has bought into the vision of changing the organization culture through the use of analytics, where data and analytics solutions are at the center of driving the business objectives. Secondly, it is important to develop a roadmap to prioritize your initiatives for your analytics program. In prioritizing your initiatives, you want to do so based on the value that a particular initiative will add to the organization, as well as the ease of executing that initiative. Developing a roadmap gives a guideline as to what will be implemented when. You will look at the benefits generated through the initiatives and you'll be able to assess what are the risks related to an initiative. A roadmap in essence guides the organization to rolling out the analytic program and gives the company a good idea of what is coming next or what is the next initiative that will be executed. The third step in an analytics initiative is to establish governance and funding. Governance provides policies and strategies for the use and management of data within the organization. In establishing governance, a governance committee will be important. And usually this consists of executives that are guiding the use of analytics within the organization. We will explore governance further in this course. Additionally, sponsorship needs to be secured. 
and the funding needs to be secured to launch the business analytics program. More importantly, there needs to be sustained funding over the life of the analytics program and allocate funds to build and maintain an enterprise infrastructure. Analytics within an organization will be a journey and building that program will happen over a number of years. And therefore, sustaining that sponsorship will be key. However, what is important in sustaining sponsorship is delivering value for the company so that it can encourage further investment within the program. The fourth step is to establish a competency center. Analytic initiatives create a need for new skills in data analysis. Therefore, a competency center is a central pool of skill resources which can be shared by all business units. This center is a full-time team dedicated to data warehousing and develops full knowledge and expertise in the data analysis techniques and models. The competency center is absolutely crucial to executing the initiatives that will support business objectives. The fifth step is that we must align business and IT for the long haul. Successful analytic programs all have an enterprise scope that took years to implement. The journey requires a close-knit team of developers and business people who work hand in hand to deliver actionable information to the users who need it. Remember, developing an analytics program is a journey that takes years to achieve and therefore the business must remain committed in reaching their goals and analytics must remain supportive in assisting the business to achieve these goals. The sixth step is that we must measure and track our return on investment. This is how we'll be able to identify the benefits of the analytics program. We must be conscious of the effort to measure and track ROI that is derived, whether this is tangible or intangible. The clear demonstration of success brings confidence to progress, while the losses indicate opportunities for improvement. You should think big and implement small. Incremental process minimizes development and releases content to the business quickly. Therefore, persons can see the benefits much earlier and the business is much more likely to invest when results are available earlier in the process. The seventh step is that we must build trust in the system. The key approach to build trust in a new analytic solution is to have the business team own the solution. It is important that stakeholders feel that they are part of creating the results within the analytics program. Successful business analytics solutions are based on communicating the strategy to the organization. And in communicating this strategy, the strategy must be well understood by the different stakeholders who will be key in assisting the delivery of the strategy. A part of building trust is ensuring that persons are adequately trained and they are trained in understanding how analytics will help the company as well as trained in the tools that must be utilized to execute on some of delivering some solutions that will address strategy. They must also be trained in ways that will improve the culture 
of the organization to become more data centric. Now, there are different strategies that a company may employ as it relates to business analytics. Companies may decide to compete on analytics. If this is their strategy, it means that analytics is the key competitive advantage. The results here is sustainable competitive advantage. Amazon does a very good job at this. A company may decide to compete with analytics. In that case, the focus is on one business process and the target is incremental profits. Many companies, both locally and internationally, tend to focus on competing with analytics as the aim is to really generate profits or increase profits over a period of time. A company may also de decide to improve with analytics. In this case, the culture of analytics is to target continuous improvements. Continuous improvements may result in change in a business process or creating improvements in how we service our clients. Companies may also decide to explore revenue through analytics. In this scenario, companies sell data as a secondary product. The intent is to improve margins or market share. Now, in the United States, there is an industry dedicated to data brokerage. There are firms who specialize in selling and reselling clients' personal data as a means of generating profits. Companies may also decide to persevere through analytics. In this case, they do what the competition does. It is the price of entry. In this scenario, the intent is for the company to remain on par with the competition in ensuring that they are offering similar services through the market by mimicking the results of the competition. Here's an activity that should get you thinking. Identify a company or sector in Jamaica that you believe should be using business analytics. Identify one critical area within that industry or business that can benefit from analytics and suggest two advantages that can be garnered in that scenario. Identify one risk that would be of primary concern in embracing business analytics in this sector. You should take into account issues that are specific to that sector in terms of regulation or operational issues. Post your response on ELS and let's start a discussion. This marks the end of lecture one.